when I signed with the Warriors 2013, I'm saying to myself, I think I've, I've met the closest thing to Jesus Christ. I think y'all need to start taking Steph more serious when right. he's talking, because what he's saying, he really believes in. And thus far, it's all come true. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am your host. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay, and the guy that's coming to for a drink and conversation today is a four-time NBA champ. He was the 2015 Finals MVP, a two-time All-Defensive player, two-time gold medalist, an All-Star, New York Times best-selling author, businessman, podcast host, Andre Iguodala. Did I say that right? Is it Iguodala or Iguodala? Whoa, you on point. Iguodala. It depends on who you ask. <laughs> I'm asking you. My father would know how to say his name. He would say Iguodala. Iguodala. But my mother would say a good dollar. <laughs> but I think I know my pops is from, so. So you would go with the Igwa dollar. Igwa dollar is the proper way, but a good dollar is easier. Right. And then I've had it butchered since I was a toddler, so. Yeah, because a lot of times you say it, it's like, nah, it's Igwa dollar. But I, he been saying the Igwa dollar, so right. I was like, okay, whatever, just say Iggy. Yeah. Most yeah. of the time, people just say Iggy and keep right. it moving. Right. Coming off an NBA championship, four-time champion, what's the summer been like thus far? For me, the summer is always crazy in terms of just getting business done. Right. So, like, I hit the ground. We just running. We just running. So, obviously, uh, spend. When you say business, not basketball business, off court business. Off court business for sure. You know, uh, doing a lot of things. I'm doing in tech. Probably around like 80 companies I'm invested in now. Right. Uh, private sector companies. Um, you know, the market's got hit a little bit right now. Right. So you don't see as many IPOs. Um, they're slowing down with that. But you know, prior to COVID hit and had a few IPOs, a couple companies that uh, did well, um, you know, recording a podcast with my man Evan Turner. Uh, that's been really good. We had some exciting guests this week. Right. Um, but it's just it's just pure work. And then I got some interesting things uh, business wise that I'm developing on the basketball side right. as well. Um, some media, other media stuff as well. So we just cooking in the kitchen. You play a long season. Obviously, you played longer than anybody else with you in the Celtics, but you won the championship. How soon do you start back ramping it back up to get ready for another season? That's a good. That's funny because I had a great conversation with Chris Bosh after the first time he won it. So it's 2015, and uh, I was at a, a CEO uh, was CEO barbecue. Uh, ben Horowitz uh, had Andreessen Horowitz, and uh, I saw Chris Bosh there, and I asked him the question: When I'm supposed to get back in the gym? And he had probably the best response. He said, as, as, "Wait as long as possible." And he's like, "You know that long season's crazy." Um, you went through it all. You got to enjoy it because they're going to throw you right back in the gauntlet as soon as the season starts. And right. you don't want to have to go through, you know, it's almost like hitting a rookie wall when you get, when you just, you overplay. Right. You know what I mean? You just get burnt out of the game and, right. and you feel like you're working as opposed to just enjoying your passion. So I always keep lifting weights and just keep my body tight. Right. And then I probably touch a ball August 1st. August 1st is July. Wow, so you were gone almost two months without touching a basketball. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, I got – you'll touch a ball just by accident. Right. Like, if you run into a ball, you'll just, like, do your Dribbly thing. do – yeah. Yeah, yeah, you might but even you're not your the, But you're not in the gym getting ready, right. for preparing for a season. Yeah, I'm not doing my two-a-days because I'll do, like, like a two weeks of two-a-days, okay. like, on my own. Right. Like, I'll get in there where I weight lift weights, go through a hard workout, go home, take a nap, eat, get back up and go in the gym at night and get up 500 makes. Right. And I'll do that for like two weeks. But, you know, as you get, as I'm getting older, you, you, you work smarter. Like watching yeah, Floyd. Like yeah, you that, watching that, Floyd. Yeah. You're like, I don't need to work for four hours. Yeah. I can get the same work in an hour and a half. And yeah. I'm just tight with it. That was, that was the hardest part for me is that I still try to do the same volume mm -hmm. with the same intensity as I got older. And my hamstrings and my quads, they couldn't take it. Yep. And I didn't understand that until I had the injuries in the offseason a little while. And I was like, you know what? I got to train smarter, not harder. Harder. The volume, yep. my body just can't take that. Yeah, the same, same thing. <laughs> 30, I'm 38 now. Right. And, you know, I wahoo my son was 15. Right. And I'm about, you know, and then I'll be like, well, I'm sore. And, <laughs> and I just wore him out. But right. I'm like, whoa, it's feel different. Right. When you say, when you like, how much longer do you want to play? Or it has to be the right situation. It's not a matter of length, it's being in the right situation. 
Oh, yeah, hundred percent. I think is uh, everything has to align, even off the court too. Right. Because when uh, if there ever becomes a time where I feel like, I mean, it could be now, it could be next year, it could be in two years. If I feel like basketball is taken away from my off the court oh, no, 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 endeavors, then I say, all right, I got to step to side. So right. we're getting closer and closer to that, right. where I got a lot of good things going on off the court, and I'm really having to think about really weighing that option right. where I, I'm, it's more valuable off the court, even if it's a you know, the things I'm doing off the court are for 10 years down the road. Right. You know, people think in this instant gratification, they think I've been investing and I got all these crazy investments. And I'm saying, oh, this has been 10 years in the making. It. Yeah, you just got to build out knowing that, you know, the private investments are really like five to 10 years out. Right. Obviously, the Warriors is a great situation if it, and you're a free agent. Is that something you're amenable to? Because you spoke about there's nothing like the Warriors with how they treat their players, the way you do business there. What makes the Warriors and how they do business so much different? Because you've been in Philly, you've been in Miami, you've been in Be uh, uh, Memphis, you've been in Denver. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you've been with one or two teams. Right. You've been with four or five teams, so you know the, the the practice schedule. You know the training. You know everything. So what makes Golden State situation so unique? I think it's just the combination of what I've been able to do off the court as well as the accomplishments we had off on the court. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bit of both, on and off. So just building that relationship with Steve. Steve let me maneuver how I know how to maneuver. And he knows that I'm locked in. So if I'm playing basketball, that's my passion. So right. I'm there early, you know, I'm getting my reps up, I'm leaving late, so I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. Right. But at the same time, the things that I'm doing off the court, you don't have access like that anywhere else. Now you're starting to see little tech hubs pop up everywhere. You know, um, the things that Michael Rubin's doing are, are amazing right. in the Philadelphia yeah. area, so guys can get into that. You, you always got New York, here in LA, you got a lot of folks from uh, Silicon Valley, especially in the media space, mm -hmm. they come down here to LA. So it's starting to get spread out more. But in terms of you know the top talent, meeting yeah, the CEOs, the direct, access. direct access is right there in the Bay. And um, like I said before, you know what I, I took, I did, a, I had a job with Comcast Ventures, like where I was actually going to the office. This was during my time where I didn't go to Memphis, where right. I was a full time employee for for uh, Comcast, right. and I was with their uh, uh, their tech uh, investment firm. And was able to uh, get a lot of knowledge there, get my feet wet. Now I'm off and start my own firm, and that's up and running. So, you know, just a lot of things going on in the right place. Yeah, let's talk about that mental mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Well, 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 really, because well, there were some guys that was was taking some shots from a distance. Right. Even though you were kind of quiet about the situation, I thought you being a veteran player say, you know what? I see they got something special here. They got a lot of you got job. They got some young talent. Let me mentor these guys. Let me let me see what I, if I can help do for them what Steph. I, I was able to bring a little bit to Steph and Clay and Draymond. What was your thought process in Memphis? So this was this is the, the issue I had. You know, I was really upset about how it all played out because, as you know, if you get traded to the team, what happens? Pack up your bags. You go to work. Right. Right. They call you, say, hey, we excited to have you. You know, we, we can't wait to have you, in, you know, in our city. Start looking for a place. We got a, a realtor. Here's a basketball player development or, you know, people that help you off the court with, right. you know, finding the right way to navigate the city. OK, that's normally how it works. Cool. Set it up. You go there. You do your job. This situation was you, you see it more and more now in basketball, especially when guys have one year left on their contract. Right. You know, uh, probably going to buy you out. Uh, probably not looking to bring you in. Uh, probably looking to trade you. Right. You know, we, we brought so you in. So they're having all these conversations after you've gotten traded there. Day one, you get traded. Day when I got traded on, um, it might have been July 7, 8, whatever the day was, okay. right? You know, uh, I think I think KD made his decision, and then he went to Brooklyn. Soon after that, I uh, talked to Bob Myers. I I'm already knowing it was about to happen. Trey happens is Memphis. Get on the phone with the agent. Never talked to anyone from Memphis. Agent goes, you know, they're not looking to bring you in. They'll have a trade or something before the season even starts. So let's look at our options coming out of Memphis. Okay. Because you're not even going to go. Right. Okay. So when that's the conversation from the beginning, right, it's to my understanding. Oh, okay. They're they looking don't really want me. It's not even like they don't want me. It's just business. Right. Nothing personal. All right. You got an asset with a. Uh, you know, you were able to make a move with the Warriors. You got a one year. Uh, expiring contract, you're looking to move that to a team that may want me to help them get to a title run, which ended up being Miami. In return, you want some assets, some draft picks in exchange because you're going young. That's the game. I understand basketball. So, okay. all right, we're on the same page. One month go by, two months go by, three months go by. Because my mind just July right. when this happens. Right. And what are we doing? You know, am, am I getting ready for the season? I just made another finals run. Right. We just went to the finals four years in a row, right? Right. Yeah, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. We went five, five years in a row. So 
all right, I got to start, you know, figuring out how I want to start getting ready for the season because I need to get ready for that particular team. Right. What's going on? And now the sentiment's changed. You know how it goes. Team wants to leverage a guy who multiple teams want. They want to leverage this team with this team. It was talk I might come to L.A. Could be the Clippers, could be the Lakers. So Memphis is smart. Are right, we going to leverage Iguodala? And who can we get more from, Memphis or, or L.A. Lakers or L.A. Clippers? Who can we get more from? We're just going to leverage them off each other. Right. And need a team bit because they knew what was going on. Right. So trade doesn't happen. So now they're like, all right, maybe we want you to come in. But that's not where your mind is. Yeah, well, we, we, we already discussed what – what we what what was the, day, the day you traded for me, you told me I wasn't going to come. Right. So what are we doing now? I mean, right. what changes? Right. Me as a player never changed. Right. So obviously you're just not getting what you want. So right. you want me to come in. You so you me- felt some type of way because they told you one thing and you're expecting it for to be that. And now all of a sudden they re- uh, reverse course and said, no, nah, all of a sudden, yeah, we do want you to come in. Well, they won't, but now they want you to come in so you can showcase so they can. You just really showcasing for them to get more. But, but, but trade. Add, add some value. So I just I just been around basketball for too long. Right. I know how things work. Right. All right, man. Y'all won't do business, so I'm gonna do business as well. So now you start hearing other teams in the trade. You might hear Milwaukee. You might hear Portland. You might hear this team. And now I'm like, wait, 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 wait. I, I do have some tr- control of my destination, regardless of if that is frowned upon or not. Right. Because we've been hearing that lately. We don't like when players request trades. Yeah. But I think there should be some accountability with teams in terms of. All right, we, we traded for you to trade you out, and then you want to change course. Now the player should have some type of say-so in terms of where they want to go. And right. in, in, in corporate America, that's usually the case. You can pretty much determine where you want to go. If right. your employer says, we don't want you here, anymore. you can go somewhere else. Right. So I just start taking matters in my own hands. All right, you want to trade me to this team? All right, I'm going to reach out to that team. Listen, uh, I got a couple months left on my contract. If you trade for me, I can just retire. You know, you just really right. taking control of your destination. Right. And... I'm not saying by any means, but you just, right. you know, I feel like I've been around long enough. I know how to handle that certain, certain, right. certain situation. Right. So that's how the situation was handled. And I told him, hey, get the, you said you had the trade done by August, September. We late September. Now you want me to come in. All right, I'll just sit at home. Because ultimately, the CBA says you can find a player for not showing up. Right. So if it was really a miss, if it was really an issue, I would have just missed every paycheck right. not going to Memphis. Right. Now, when you break all that down, if they really wanted me, they would have just fined me for not showing up. Right. So it was a mutual agreement. You know, you don't have to come to right. training camp. And but, we'll maybe the, but maybe the players in Memphis didn't understand what the front office had going on with you. 100%. That's why you've never heard me say anything negative about any of the, the players. If right. you've heard me say anything about those guys, I love those guys. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm you know, vice president of a union. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a player first type of guy right. where I got y'all back. I'm trying to help y'all understand the business, right. understand the game. So it's never been a personal, right. you know, situation. And I think, uh, you know, you got front office who may feed certain guys information. That's where they're getting their knowledge of the business from. So they might go into an interview and speak a certain type of tone towards me right. not understanding the situation because of who they got it from. So right. it's just like you only hear one side of a story. Okay. There was this meme going around where you were having a conversation with Andrew Wiggins. Mm-hmm. It was very similar to the situation, I think, maybe it's first year or the second year, uh, Draymond and KD, and he's doing this, he's doing this to KD, and KD, like, I understand. Very similar meme with you and Andrew Wiggins. What were you telling Wiggins, and what were you trying to get him to understand mm-hmm what he wasn't doing as opposed to what he needed to do. It was funny because he was doing the right thing. So what happened was he, you know, Wig showed that he's one of the top defenders in this league right. in the playoffs. Yes. Period. Yes. You know, he had to guard Luka. Uh, you know, he spent a little bit of time on Ja. Um, and then he had to guard, guard Jason Tatum. Yes. You know, top three young. These are the new faces of the league coming right. up. Correct. So he had to guard. And he's still young. He's 27 years old. Right. So um, I remember... One of our first games versus the Lakers, early in the season, we played LeBron. Wiggs pulled me to the side, and he said, you know, what's some tips on guarding LeBron? I said, oh, shit, he listening. This is the type of player I like. Right. A guy that asks me questions, that means he's listening. Right. And from there, me and Wiggs just built this great rapport. Like, that's my guy. Mm-hmm. And I always knew he was good, just may not have been in the right situation. So right. we in the finals, and whoever he's guarding, he's giving them problems. So obviously both teams scout. Boston is setting picks on him constantly. They trying to get him off Tatum. Right. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run sets and we just gonna hit Wiggins. We just trying to get a switch. We just need to get Wiggins off of Tatum. Right. And the first couple of games, he was getting through the screens. And then that particular game, that was game three. We lost game three. He was accepting the switch. Right. And I'm telling Wiggs, 
don't get hit by no more picks, you know, and it, it it's two sided because Wiggs has four teammates on the court too that should be helping him not get hit. Right. And you know the communication out may not calls, yeah. have been as there like it should have been. Right. And I'm telling Wiggs, all right, we not we not. Uh -uh, it's not a two way communication. It's one way. It's you and it's only you. Somebody said a pick, run through him or go around him. Don't accept switching. And it's a compliment to how good of a defensive player you are. That's what I was trying to get him to see. And I was just letting him know, like, you know, I've been guarding everybody my whole career. You know, right. I, I, Carmelo, Kobe, Bron, Joe Johnson was an amazing guy I had to guard. You KG. know, Paul Pierce. You know, I, I mean, one game I guarded Rondo, Ray Allen, Paul Pierce, KG. That's when I knew I was a great defender. And I was trying to get Wiggs to see that. Right. You know how, you know how I know you're a good defender? Because <laughs> they keep setting picks on you because they don't want up. you guarding the best player. Right. Now you know who you are. Go kill him. Right. And, and that's exactly what he did. You watch the rest of the games. He, you didn't see him switch too much on right. picks or accept the switch. And he did what he had to do. Do you think before he got to Golden State, he lacked confidence? I think it's, it's I mean, you think about it. He was the number one pick in the draft. Mm -hmm. And he never played a game for the team that selected him number one overall. And then he gets shipped to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And then Minnesota trades him for D'Angelo, uh, I think D'Angelo Russell. Right, right, right. And right. so, you know, he's like, well, damn. I'm the number one pick in the draft, and I done got moved twice in like three years, four years. I don't think he lost confidence. I just don't think he was in a situation that warranted confidence. Okay. When you're in certain organizations and the goal may not be to win a championship, the goal may be let's try to win more games than we lose. Right. And let's try to make it look good. Right. It's really hard to play the right way. It's really hard to play team basketball. It's really hard to sacrifice because really all you're doing is trying to show face like I got my 20 points tonight. I got 25 tonight. I did my job. Right. And that happens all across sports on, you know, the bottom half of the teams. Guys are just trying to get their numbers to say it wasn't my fault. Right. So it's just you just get caught up in bad habits of, of, of you know, a bad organization. Right. Not to call them a bad organization. It's just not winning ways. Right. And, and you get, you just continue to get criticized in terms of how you're playing the game. Right. And then he gets to a situation where, oh, I'm playing to win. So I don't have to get 25. He averaged 18 this year, but right. it was a great 18. Shot the highest percentage he had from the right. three-point point from the three point Starting line. Started the All-Star game. Started the All-Star game. He, it was amazing for us. And then he was our second best player in the, in the playoffs, playoffs, period. Correct. Like, he was our second best yes. player, and that says a lot from, you know, we got Steph, we got – Draymond, we got Clay. Those guys have been running the league for the last eight years. Right. You know what I mean? So for him to come in and do that, the talent was always there. He's just never been in a position to really play with real confidence and play real basketball. Why do you – they're totally different players, and I don't want people to misconstrue this where I'm saying that Andrew Wiggins is better than Kevin Durant, I'm not mm -hmm. saying. But why do you think he was such an adequate replacement for Kevin Durant? Yeah, yeah I do think they're different. You know, um, and, and I think we have a, it's a different type of team, especially with our young talent. Like with a guy like Jordan Poole, yeah. we didn't have that explosive score off the bench, the bench. because we had KD. Right. Like we didn't have an explosive. Like it was myself, Sean Livingston, uh, Barbosa, and uh, Maurice Spates was there early. Right. But we had good depth off the bench, right. but it was more like uh, players who did specific things where you just stood there and spot up and shot the ball. Or you play defense, you you were right. a smart player. We Poole didn't have, can go get thirty. Who can go? You saw Who <laughs> go get thirty three, four, five games in a row? And with KD, we didn't, we didn't need none of that. Just right. get KD the ball, move the ball, move out the way if we needed the bucket. Well, with Wiggs, I feel like it's a little different because of having Jordan Poole, having Clay come back, and you know, you know, Clay's gonna get his attempts. What do you say? I ain't sacrificing for nobody. <laughs> but I thought Wiggs was just really good at being able to. Uh, what he did better than he's ever done in his career is rebound the ball the way he did. Right. You know, he just did the podcast with me and he said, I'll never average four rebounds for the rest of my career. He was attacking the glass. You know what I'm saying? You know, he, he finally started getting to the line, wasn't afraid of the line. So he was picking up on the intangibles. We didn't, Wiggs was always a guy who would just go get you 24 points a game, but he might have three rebounds. Right. He might have one assist. So it was, it was empty stats because he was in a bad situation right. in terms of winning, but he came into a winning situation and he started doing all the little intangible things and it just meshed so well with our team because of what else we had around him. you caught a lot of criticism Steph wins his fourth ring he's finals MVP finally he's a two-time MVP he's regarded as the greatest shooter ever and you said mm -hmm. after winning this fourth ring and winning the finals MVP that he solidifies himself as the greatest point guard mm -hmm. and you said that 
stone face as if Magic Johnson didn't exist is not still here. You know what happened? I went and watched uh, Winning Time on HBO yeah. Max, and I watched It's Magic on Apple TV. Yeah. So I had knew about Magic, and I revered Magic. Sometimes we revere guys, and, and it, it works both ways. Sometimes we, we look too much into a guy, or we don't look enough into a guy. Right. So you can get both ways where a guy right. will... And I don't want to I don't want to mess up my words, but I got to see Magic's weaknesses yeah. where I could never see him before. Right. And now I'm watching every little close thing and I'm like, oh, OK, now I'm seeing, you know, his weaknesses. And I start watching uh, on Olympic Channel, the 92 Olympics. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm really watching everything. I'm looking for God's weaknesses now. Right. You know what I mean? So just watching that in depth. And when you're in the finals, you're looking for anything to get away right. from the finals. So right. I, I was really throwing myself and immersed into Magic. Right. So. Being able to break down his game from that, and then always, oh, I know Steph's weaknesses. Right. You know, I'm with him every day. Right. So just matching up things, everything's everybody's been saying about him, and the teams Magic had with him, the team Steph had with him, mm -hmm. like Magic had, I think higher a higher level of talent. Yeah, Kareem, surrounding Kareem's him, the right? top three player, no matter right. how you slice. And, and and I think Magic had a guy who's never. He's gotten credit for how good he was, but no, I, I don't think people know how good James Worthy was. Oh, yeah, yeah. James That's Worthy good. would be a great player in any and every era. Oh, yeah. Which is rare. You, yes. you know you know what in football, yes. where there's certain guys that their games don't translate. Correct. Magic had a few, few guys whose games would translate. Right. You know, I think Cooper's game would translate, especially 3 and D 3 and D, yes. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, about, uh, B. Uh, B. Scott. B. Scott. B. Scott game would, uh, would translate because he was kind of a 3D guy as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Bilali Divac was nice. Yeah. And this was early with him, well, too. Well, he, he was a big pass. He was a passing big man. Right, which would be great right now. He'd be a poor man's joker, they would say. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Magic had really great talent around him. Yes. And then, you know, it's funny when they talk about Steph, they really like breaking down the weaknesses of the guys around right. him. You know, they always want to talk about what Draymond can't do. Right. They, and they, they always forget about what he can do. And mm -hmm. then Clay, they always try to call him one dimensional. Right. He's always been a great two way player. Plus, he just had two, two injuries. Yeah, yeah. And you just said it. You know, Wiz coming in because they try to say it was KD. And then Wiz coming in, Steph still do it. Then you got a young player in Poole. You know, he was regarded as the worst draft in the draft. Right. The guy said that. Yes. The worst pick thus far in the draft. And Steph got this guy out here. He about to get 100 million. So right. I think for, you know, I always was a fan of Jason Kidd. He's one of my favorite point guards. Mm -hmm. He always got his guys the max contract. So it ain't all the way about your number, but the guys, what they can do around you. Steph's done everything you can imaginably think of in terms of basketball, whether he's got the stats for him, Steph, he's got the chips, and what he's done for his teammates. And on top of Magic did it with the Lakers in terms of the valuation the Lakers had when he got in. Look at the valuation of the Warriors when they bought the team with Steph versus right, right now. Right. It's, it's, just, it's just astronomical. So, you know, everybody wants to try to put different – parameters on what makes you great well he's 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 checked off every box is, is Steph really a point guard considering that Draymond really runs the offense or is he a two masquerading as a point because I think there are a lot of twos I think Dame Lillard I think Ja I think all these guys Iggy they're really twos okay I like that they're like really that. twos masquerading so so <laughs> this is gonna sound like off but it's not but Draymond's so smart, he just know where to throw the ball because he know them two killers going to catch it and yeah. put it up. So his, I don't think his assists are inflated because most guys don't know where they like the ball, right. don't know how to get it to him, yes. when to get it to him, yes. what play to call. But, you know, Draymond is like the point, a point guard out there, but Man, that, but, dribble, but, that dribble, hand off that Draymond be doing. Where he, and, he run the other side yeah, and drop that thing yeah. off. And then sometimes he'll, he'll like fake, he's going to hand it off and then go dunk yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he knows how to bounce it. He sees Steph coming, he'll bounce the ball, no Steph one in a certain place. Mm -hmm. The way he can hit uh, uh, Clay, and they don't never have to break rhythm. Yep. That's an art. That mm -hmm. comes from playing with someone for such mm -hmm. a long period of time and knowing that person. But I will say that David Lee was an all-star. I believe yeah. Steph was out there. So I do believe like Steph has a great dynamic with his power forward. Right. And if you get a high IQ power forward, they're going to be succeed. But when you get a power forward like Draymond, who's the high, probably the top IQ guy in NBA history, like he's in that top 1%. Yeah. It's a deadly combination. Look, Steph, and, and, and this is what I say about athletes. They pretend I don't hear, I don't care, I don't care. They do care. And they do hear. And if they don't hear it, they got some homeboys that heard it. And if the homeboys didn't hear it, they got family members that heard it. For but sure. somehow it finds its way to get back. Mm -hmm. And Steph Curry made it a point to be known. I heard what y'all was saying. Yeah. Don't think I didn't hear. Yeah. Now, 
Because y'all said I got these other, the first one, okay, y'all didn't want to give me no credit. Y'all talking about I played bad. Iggy got the MVP. Fine, that's fine. The next two, I played unbelievable. KD got the MVP. He deserved those MVP. Yeah. But y'all make it seem like I was like a role player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now, no KD. I did this. What y'all want to say now? What was he like behind the scenes? Because I know he was gloating. I mean, he, Steph, see, people love Steph. They say, oh, he's so, look at him, little <laughs> six foot, six two Steph. He's so cute and cuddly. And he thinking all the time, yeah, I told you, you know what. Draymond opened my eyes one day, and I hope I don't get Draymond in trouble, but Draymond was spot on. Draymond watches closely. I'm watching closely. Another guy watching closely, people don't really pay attention to, is Kavon Looney. Kavon, 26 years old, been in the league 12 years, it seems like. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But quiet is kept. Uh, consistent wise, Loon might have had the third best year for us. Yeah. You know, Steph, Wiggs, and, you know, Poole was nice, but he was a little inconsistent because he's right. young. But consistency, Loon was getting four points, 18 rebounds. Yeah. So, but I'm just saying, us three watching. And Draymond said it one day. He said, Steph like that. Don't get it twisted. Steph like that. Steph like that attention. But it's a competitor. Yeah. Competitor's attention. Like, oh yeah, oh y'all, y'all, y'all think it's a game, huh? Yeah. Y'all think it's sweet. And we used to always say like, guys think Steph's sweet, and they get on the court, and they're like, man, this light skinned dude, I'm about to kill him. And before they know it, now all the guys in the league <laughs> say the same thing. Like, I didn't know he was that good, but man, I look up, and he had 30. And but now guys know it, and then he getting the best of everybody every night. Yeah. You heard what you heard with uh. My man from West Side Chicago said, Patrick Beverly, mm -hmm. I'm getting the right meal. I'm in bed by 9.30. I done watched all the film. I got a big one tomorrow. I got to go get Steph Curry. Every night. Yeah. Every night. And he keep he keep doing it. He, he been doing it. Yeah. And, and, and then this year before the injury, he we got off to 18 and one start. Right. So it, it, was, it wasn't like it was a fluke. Like, oh, we about to really run it. We about to really run through y'all. So right. for him, to, he's got that ego in him where he's, he wants to all know, like, I'm really one of them dudes. Right. I want to know the pitch. You guys went to Sag Harbor about four or five years ago to recruit this one guy. Mm -hmm. So when you're on the flight, the private jet going over there, what are you talking? Okay, who's going to talk first? What's going to be, what are you going to tell him? What are you going to tell him? How do we convince him mm -hmm. to come to Golden State and play with a guy that's a two time MVP, unanimous MVP? Three guys, of, all the four of you guys mm -hmm. have all gone to the uh, All-Star game. Mm -hmm. Draymond was, you know, on the cusp of being Defensive Player of the Year. Yep. Clay is a top five shooter all time. So what's the pitch? How do you convince Kevin Durant to come to Golden State and link up with you guys? I mean, we all play ball. We've been playing ball against each other since we were kids. Right. Steph, Clay, no, Steph, myself, and KD, we have been teammates before. People didn't remember that. 2010 World Championships. We were on the same team. Right. So we got the chance to, to spend some time with each other, practice every day. Right. That was one of my favorite basketball trips, all of us. Right. And I think what you find out about a lot of basketball players, this is my reason to go into going to the Warriors. You've been in the, I have been in the league 10 years. Mm -hmm. 10 years is a long time in the league. Yeah. And I'm my whole thing is I want to play basketball and have fun. I just want to have joy. I want right. to wake up in the morning and I want to look forward to going to going work. Going to work. That's all I want to do. And KD was around the same time in his career. Right. And you have seen what he had been going through. Uh, you, we see what Chris Paul go through still to this day. Yes. They're going to try to hold that over Chris Paul's head forever. Right. And I try to tell people Chris Paul is one of the greatest winners of all time. Right. It just so happens it may not be in the books for you to win a championship. Right. But who's to say that your career is less than thou because you didn't win a chip? You're right. still one of the top at what you do all time. Right. And you get tired of hearing that noise. You just said it. We all hear it. Yeah. So I think the pitch was, <laughs> listen, man. You the best. You were best basketball player in the world. Nobody arguing that. And you play your best when you enjoy the game. I, we didn't play against KD multiple times. We just played him. We, we we were down three, three one. one to him. We came back, and we have been seeing him over the years. You know, the game he broke his foot. He had thirty five, and it was eight minutes to go in the second quarter. <laughs> like right. we know KD. Listen, we just want you to come here and have fun, man. Whatever you want to do, we gonna we gonna make sure you have fun, and we gonna win. And I think that was the big part of it, just being the reassurance that, you know, there's no egos. Because, you know, that's going to affect the team more than anything. Yes. Like, most people don't understand how the ego 
affects the team yeah. more than anything else. It, it, it ain't about X's and O's. It's, it's really the pros and Joes that can y'all get along and, right. and, and just everybody feels like they're being valued. Right. It's, it's easy when you got one guy and then you got a bunch of other guys. Correct. But Steph at that point in time was equal because he had won back-to-back -back MVPs. He was already a champion. Mm -hmm. Kevin Durant had an MVP, but he hadn't won a championship yet. Correct. So theoretically, on a pedestal, while, while you might think that Kevin Durant was the better player, Steph had accomplished more. So now how do you get those guys? And for Steph, I think the Steph was the key because Steph got to be willing to like, <laughs> go ahead, KD. Right. Slide that up. Right. Hey, get up out the seat right. and let KD, because without Steph blessings, first of all, you're not even on that plane. Correct. If Steph says, nah, we're not doing this. We're not doing it. Bob Meyer, Steve right. Curry, like, okay, bro, we good then. True. And I think what hasn't been spoken enough is that I think Steph took a back seat for how long was KD there? Three years. Three years. Mm -hmm. I think Steph took a back seat every year. He did. Like, I'm talking about stats wise. Yeah. Numbers rise, attempts right. wise. <laughs> Clay was getting more shots. Clay, Clay told you, man, I ain't sacrificing for nobody. <laughs> but Clay is gonna be Clay, and we love Clay. But I, Steph was that one that sacrificed the most. Mm -hmm. You know, how many more threes would he have? If KD didn't come along, right. you know what I'm saying? Like, like you know. And the plus, the guy, you guys blowing it, everybody out. Just imagine who you're playing. I mean, Steph will play like 30 minutes a night. Exactly. Exactly. And, and no one talks about, you know, he, he never complained, never had an issue, never talked about his brand. You know, his brand probably possibly could have took a hit. Right. You know, he wasn't quite selling as many shoes. Right. You know what I mean? And, and, and he just kept it all in stride because I think he just knew the, the bigger picture, man. When you win, everything else is going to come how it's supposed to come. What's he, what's he like off the court? Off the court, Steph is who he is. He's an interesting individual because he doesn't get outside himself. You know, no matter where he is, he, he you know he's comfortable in his own skin, and I think that's coming from that background that he had because he and Clay are similar, right? In terms of nothing faces them, like right. they've seen it all. They've seen right. the hoopla. They the had the fathers that played in the NBA, yeah, they, so they kind of know what to expect. Yeah, so nothing really phases them, so they, they don't really have to go search for attention. You know, they don't have to really uh, look the part for anybody to really accept them. They say, uh, I, I've been through all this. I've been to a million NBA games before I played my first NBA game. Right. I just want to go out here and hoop. This is what I love doing. And uh, I think that is one of the blessings that, you know, we don't see as much is that that balance that we have is because those two came from the NBA and then you know, the other balance is that that crazy man on the other end <laughs> with the fire. It's just an amazing balance, you know. Right. Like we can just cover every part, of, every aspect of, of, of the picture, and I think that's what makes for a great coach. You guys win the. Did you go in and say, "Man, man, I want to win this so bad"? Because there's so many people mm -hmm. I want to say, "Shut the, you know what up." I mean, Clay got up there and says, "Man." Them bums from Memphis, Draymond, <laughs> Draymond was going crazy. Yeah. Steph was talking. Did you guys think about that before you won the title? Like, you know, I want to win. I, there, there's some people I want to tell some things. I think I think we, it got there once we got to the finals. Mm -hmm. You know, once once I saw the way the uh, playoff picture was mapped out, I was like, whoa, we we got a real chance. We right. just got to take care of business each round. We right. we can't slip up. Right. Because I think with us, you know, if we lose the wrong game. That's it for us. We, that's our Achilles heel. We lose the wrong game, and then our confidence waver a little bit. We kind of wacky like that. Right. But I knew if we took care of business um, through each round, we'd be good. And then once we got to Dallas and we went up, what, we went up 2-0? Yeah. And then we should have went up. I think we went up 3-0. Yeah, we went up 3-0. Yeah, so once, once we got to the finals, I knew Boston was good. And I said, we got to win. If we don't win, it's over. We got to win. And... I need Wiggs to play at a high, high level. And Wiggs and I had that conversation. I said, Wiggs, if you play at a high level, I don't even think I got to play. Coach ain't going to put me in. You play at a high level, we're going to win it. And you that's go down, exactly so, what so happened. So what, what are you thinking? You go down 0-1. You go down 2-1 with game four still in Boston. Right. So what's 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 the mindset of game four? You're down 2-1. Yep. You don't want to go, even though you got Steph, a historically generational mm -hmm. talent, you don't want to go down 3-1 because the likelihood, it's happened before, you're mm -hmm. on a team that got tracked down 3-1. But you know the odds are not in your favor right. running somebody down 3-1. We've been down 2-1 before. Our first championship, Cleveland had us 2-1. 2-1. People forget that. Right. Similar situation, we had home court advantage. So we lose game one. Game one was kind of funky. Because you had a lead and they came back. Game one was funky. <laughs> there was a few things that happened in game one. And I'm looking up at the scoreboard and I'm thinking, 
why the game so close? Something ain't right. Right. Or I'm watching the game and you know you watching too close. Now you start a conspiracy theory. Like, listen, man, that that I don't know, man. That that's that killed our that killed our run. You right. know, I don't want to say what killed the run, but that killed the run. That killed the run. And it wasn't really what Boston was doing. So I'm confident in that sense. Like, they we we gave the game away. Right. And they took it and they they had to make some shots. They had to make some shots. And they shot what 75% from yeah. three mm-hmm. late in that second half. It was crazy. So I saw that and I'm like, all right, we good. Now we lose game three. But game three, I was confident. I said, all right, we figured them out. They won game three. They got home. They got their energy. The crowd was incredible. You know, Draymond was trying to figure his thing out. I'm like, Draymond to figure it out. I'm not worried about him. We play as hard as we can game four. We'll win game four. Now we're going back home. I just need Steph to give me a Michael Jordan finish. And what's crazy was Steph was really good, and they considered that his bad, his worst game. Right. But Steph was doing all the intangibles. Right. Wiggins played out of his mind in game Wiggins five. played out of his, game, out of his okay. mind. Poole had some big plays yeah. in game five. He didn't have 20 points, so people don't know the impact mm-hmm. of a guy who might only have 11 points. Poole was a big key to game five. Then I said, Steph won't finish him off. And then Steph, Steph got rid of them boys. You got, I mean, but what is it about you and Memphis? Because Memphis knocked you guys out of the play in a couple of years ago. He knocked them out. Knocked them out. You weren't there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I was and, in the final. I went to the final. Oh, you was in Miami. Yeah, yeah. But I, so what is it? What is it? What is it about Memphis? Is it young and they don't know any better? They should leave their elders alone because Jaw is talking, Dylan Brooks is talking. I mean, these guys and the fans have bought into it. Uh, uh, you know, they be playing whip that trick. Right. And Draymond had the towel. He was like, yeah, we're going to whip that trick. So, yeah, we all about that. I mean, what is it about Memphis, the Grizzlies, and you guys that is, it causes such an intense rivalry? I think we bring the best out of our opponents. And we've always had a – we had a – We've had a great competitive history with Memphis. When they had Zebo, when they had yeah. Gasol, they had Conley. Yeah. Uh, they had Tony Allen. Right. They, they had us down 2-1 as well. Right. And uh, it was second round. And I think that was 2015. So they've always played that grit and grind type basketball. And I think this, this Memphis team now, they're a well-oiled machine. Right. They got a good front office that knows how to pick talent. They got a good coach that puts everybody in a position to succeed. And it's like you said, you got your main guy. And it's not like they have others because they got a lot of talent, but everyone accepts their Bill role. Bill. Love Jaron Jackson. Yeah. Love him. I even love Dylan. Yeah. Dylan's so crazy that he needs to be crazy to be in the NBA. I always tell people sometimes, why is that guy so confident? If that guy wasn't that confident, he would not be in the NBA. Right. He needs that confidence right. to be who he is. Right. Now, he might be feast or famine, but he, he needs to be that confident right. and crazy to be in the right. NBA. And they got some other guys on the team. Dylan that Brooks. People, yeah. yeah, people don't give Zaire up. Williams. Zaire is young boy. He's going to be great. And, yeah. and Steven Adams is one of the guys yeah. who, you know, he just he has that presence out there. And Kevon Looney was a big part of why we won that series. You right. know, we switched up the, uh, the matchups a little bit. And Kevon, you know, he started having a 16, 18 rebounds. Yeah. I think he might have had a 20. 20, 20. rebounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was crazy. So um, I think they're just a well-oiled machine. Um, I, I did say it in one of our uh, uh, scout meetings that, they too, they they too young to even understand in what they're doing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like once you start really understanding the pressure of I have to win, it changes. I don't think they understand the pressures of having to win, so they just play free and they right. play with that confidence, and that's a scary team. Right. When I, you guys now obviously Kevin Durant requested a trade, and you know Phoenix, the Miami Heat were the first two teams on his on his uh, on his list, mm-hmm. but there are very few teams that have draft picks yep. and the young talent mm-hmm. that the Brooklyn Nets, mm-hmm. the one team that has the talent, young talent yep. that can satisfy the Nets and the draft picks mm-hmm. is the Warriors. Mm-hmm. Do you think the Warriors should be willing to revisit the Kevin Durant and give up? Some, it's going to probably, it's going to probably cost you Jordan Poole and Kaminga and Moody, mm-hmm. maybe Wiseman and some draft picks. Mm-hmm. Maybe Andrew Wiggins, maybe they have to move, uh, uh, Ben Simmons, because you got two rookie guys on a max contract, yeah. so both of those guys can't be on the same team. Mm-hmm. But it's going to cost you three or four of your young, talented guys and some draft picks. Is that something that you believe the Golden State Warriors are interested in or be, would be willing to be interested in? I think KD has put himself in a, on that, that tier. And it's only, it's only two or three of those guys. You know, you're looking at Bron, KD. Uh, you Steph. I'm putting Steph on there for sure. Giannis. Giannis, yeah, 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 Giannis, Giannis, for sure. I think 
when you got guys like that and, and they giving they looking at you, it's like that meme where the dude holding hands with his girl and yeah. then you and he yeah. look back and see <laughs> I gotta look again. It's, it's one of them situations, yeah. you know what I mean? He, right. You gotta look at it because he's just that good and right. we've won so much that people don't understand how hard it is to win a championship, period. I'm talking about any sport. It's one of the hardest things you can do. And then when you start winning so many, people assume that it's just easy. Right. So they looking like, nah, we'll just get another one without such and such. Or right. we could do, nah, like you got to keep stacking. You got to win. Every team that's ever won a championship has been the more talented team in the entire league. And right. it's just been like that. You got to have talent. So with that talent, you got to look. Joe loves the young core. He loves, right. he loves, he's got this thing, you know, you know, they're thinking light years speed, light years ahead. That's right. his moniker. And he's like, I got a championship group now. And I feel like I got a championship group group I'm trying to build within it which is you don't see that at all right. and you know that's kind of but he's you know he's got to look so it's gonna be a difficult decision to make for him you joined the Warriors after playing with the Nuggets what transpired uh, uh I think it was George Carl mm -hmm. called you a mole mm -hmm. uh not a whole lot of players <laughs> former players like George Carl right uh, Boogie Cousins had a lot to say I think you said some things about him what transpired uh with the Nuggets and then Golden State, because if I'm not mistaken, Golden State beat you guys right. in the playoffs, right. and then you later joined them that, right. uh, that right. following right. offseason. Yeah, yeah. We were the third seed. Um, Gallo goes down with an ACL tear, like three games left for the playoffs. Timothy Mogab, Moscow broke his thumb before the last game of the season, and uh, we just got caught in the bus. Saw Steph start shooting the threes and running down the court before it went in. You know, he just right. You know, he, that's what, like the coming out party. So it was a great series. They beat us uh, fair and square. Uh, but it was one particular thing uh, that happened where uh, we had an interesting uh, scout report, you know, with Steph and Clay. You know, we just going to rough them up a little bit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it was getting a little borderline, you know, and... Uh, getting borderline dirty. Yeah. So I, I'm, I was never a fan of, I can't stop you, so I'm going to try to rough you up a little bit. Right. I'm, you know, man, may the best man win. Right. You know, I, I feel like I'm the better player, and if you get me today, you got me. Right. And uh, I remember George Carl, I mean, not George, uh, Mark Jackson. Right. You know, he, I'm, I'm in front of their bench, and he was like, yo, why y'all trying to hurt my players? Why y'all trying to hurt my players? And I'm like, uh, coach, I don't, I don't move like that. So, you know, I, just, I, I don't move like that. That was it. That was all you said? That was it. I don't, yeah. I don't play like that, coach. And I think after the game, you know, Mark and I, I joke with Mark. I said, Mark, you threw me under the table. He's like, how I throw you under the table? I said, you know, he, after the game, Mark said, you know, I'm pretty sure that I got confirmation from one of their players that the sky report was to hurt my guys. Right. And, you know, we understand how right. we talk to each other. Right. Listen, I, I'm, I'm basketball one-on-one. -on -one. Right. We're going to compete. You beat me, you beat me. That's how I move. Right. But everybody in the world know the sky report. You just watching. Right. You know, our bigs is crashing into the guys. They get a bit clumsy, you know, stiffs. They're right. running into the, you know, you can see it. So that was the sentiments coming out of that. And, and George didn't have an adjustment for them boys and them boys beat us. Right. And typical George, George gonna run with a narrative that he gonna run away from what it was. Right. You just got out coached. Right, you didn't make any adjustments. So let me look for something else. And he's done it throughout his career. He wrote a book, he has some things about, you know, young African-American men and his reason for why they aren't as successful under him is because they didn't have fathers. He's done, he said some things about some African-American players that I uh, didn't take too kindly of and you know, we haven't seen George in a while, and he's just looking for attention. So you'll see him on Twitter, uh, you know, every other week, just looking for some controversy and just looking, you know, to, to bring his stature back up. Considering that the tra the Draymond KD, mm -hmm. that was a situation. KD wants the ball late in the ball game. Draymond gets the rebound. Draymond's bringing it up, like he's done so many times. Mm -hmm. In that situation, KD normally guy would get the ball to KD. He busted up the court. Draymond said, "Hey, I got it this time. Just get on down the court. I'm gonna get you a better shot. Whatever happens, happens." Right. They go to the bench. Neither guy's willing to let that situation go. What are you thinking? Um, it's certain situations you gotta know your teammates. Right. And you know you got certain teammates who. In certain situations, you can't calm them down. You got to let them just get it out. Right. And then, you know, I've been in situations where I've had some tense interactions 
you know, with my teammates or with Draymond, and I, I may understand, all right, let him get it out. Or no, now is the time for me to respond. Now is the time for me to, you know, come with this approach. So it's all timing and everything. So that was, that was a wild situation because you don't see that that often. Right. So now you're just assessing, like, how should we move? Because we had never, Draymond, we've seen Draymond behave in this manner before. We had never seen Kevin Durant get upset publicly at a right. teammate. Right. So he's like, damn. I mean, and then what was, what was, why did it, why did he get to this? I'm okay. I understand that you wanted the ball. He didn't get you the ball, but it's not a big deal. No, no big deal. And for it to get in it, mm -hmm. for it to escalate right. like it did. Did anything change? Because everybody said it didn't change, but it felt like from the outside, it felt like a lot changed, Diggy. I don't think, you know, to be honest, I don't think too much changed. Because we still got back to the finals. Yeah. And then, you know, it took a KD Achilles for us to lose the finals. And KD's, uh, no, Clay. And, and, and then Clay tore his uh, ACL. ACL in game six. And, you know, you still. But were they still cool? Were they still playing cards? Were they still laughing and talking and going around? Because something had to, I mean, you know, grown men. Now, you know how we are, you know. You know how we, we are. We butt head like yeah. that there. We ain't. Yeah. yeah. But I think, I think I've seen, I've seen teammates actually knuckle yeah, up. Yeah, of course. And, and, but they cool afterwards. Yeah. We handle like men, we squash it, we move forward. Right. And I think uh, we did everything we were supposed to do that year in terms of making sure that we kept that yeah. thing tight-knit, making sure. Like, we didn't have but, too many leaks. But y'all suspended Draymond. It was almost like y'all suspended Draymond to show KD, we got your back. We're going to suspend him uh, because we want you to resign. That's what it looked like from the outside. That's what it looked like to me. Well, we just had a conversation. <laughs> when, you got, when you got that top-tier talent, what you going to do? I mean, not only is it smart financially for the business, <laughs> but it's smart to get wins. It's smart to try to keep, like. Yeah, you got to do. Hey, what I say, how you, you, you win a championship? You got to have the best talent. Yeah. <laughs> Who the most talented guy? One of the most talented ever. Yes. Ever. Yes. So, but at the same time, you know, I think there was faults all around. Right. It wasn't just one guy, you know. Did you have a team meeting? Did you guys discuss, did you guys ever discuss that? Yeah, we had discussions internally because we all tight with each other. Like, right. You know, we 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 boys, we family, right. we family. End of the day, right. like that is bigger than basketball. Right. We family. Right. So let's just handle it like family. So you know, they handled their business, and then we kind of you know did what we had to do. Right. So you know, I think that's what was beautiful coming out of that is that we didn't really have no leaks. You know, uh, we had good days, we had bad days. We talked through it, and you know, everybody's tight to this day, but. It was a lot coming from that, you know. Uh, it, it was. It, I think it was tough for some guys too, when you don't, you still hear noise after you've accomplished things. Right. You know, we keep winning and we keep accomplishing things, but we just keep getting hit. We keep getting attacked. Right. Uh, oh, we can't solidify that. Y'all messed up the league. This ain't fair. You know, you got other guys on other teams. You know, my best friend Ever Turner was like, "Yo, man, this is not cool, fam. This ain't fair." We don't have a chance. And so it's just giving, it's giving Skip an opportunity. Everybody just still. So it's just like. This is this is really beautiful for the game of basketball because like, right. we still playing team basketball. We right. still number one in the league in assists. We still top five in defense. We playing basketball the right, right way, so right. it's not like we just cheating. We really executing at a very high level. Right. And we you, you, human nature, you, you you we hear it. You said it. You know we hear it. We watch everything, and whether we like it or not, things affect us, and, and it can determine how we react to the noise. So one guy might react this way, another guy might not react that way, right. and. You know, one guy might be saying, you know, one foot in, one foot out because he's tired of another noise. Another guy might be saying, I see this guy on the way out. You know, not that that happened, but you just start assuming. And right. what they say assume is you're making an ass out of you and me. Right. And then now you got fictional beef and you don't know where it came from. It just slowly crept in. And right. that's one thing we were good at with keeping that noise out. And I think it just the, the noise kind of crept in and, and just threw us off a little bit. Do you believe Steph will be as accepting of KD, a reunion with KD, as he was in the beginning, considering that they just won a championship? Because, Ig, I'm going to be honest with you. I do not believe, had you not gotten KD, you could have ever beaten the Cavaliers again. After they walked you down 3-1, Kyrie was on a different level. LeBron was always on that level. I'm glad, I I'm glad you said Kyrie was on another level. I, he's going, I appreciate no, no, Kyrie was on another level. Kyrie, 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 Kyrie had a, a ride. I don't believe if you don't get KD, I don't believe you can beat the Cavaliers today again because they had gained so much confidence from coming back from down 1-3 as opposed to you guys had to have lost confidence because that was the first time in the history of the NBA Finals someone had came back. So it was almost like it was a match made in heaven. KD needed you guys to solidify his place as a mm -hmm. champion 
You needed him to continue this run. There it is. Point blank period. I, I do think we are built. Uh, we got we got the way our cloth is built. It's something in that DNA that isn't quantifiable in terms of our toughness. Because we've been down before. We've been down 3-1-2. We just went down 3-1-2. Yeah, the, who I felt like, who I felt like was the best team in the league. Yeah. I felt like OKC was the best team in the league. Mm -hmm. They had the most size. They had Serge was playing his best yep. in his career. Steven Adams, Adams was doing his thing. Uh -huh. KD, they got set, they got three seven footers on the front line. Right. And, and one of them can't be stopped right. anywhere on the court. Right. And, and you know, um, and they got Reggie Jack. And they, Re Reggie was playing well. Yeah, yeah. Deion Waiters was playing mm -hmm. well. He, he was like, he, they got him on the steal. Right. And then Russ is being Russ. You know, then they had, uh, I think Merle was on that team. Mm -hmm. They had some shooters. They had, yeah. Thapalosha was one of the yeah. top defenders in the league, right. too. He's 6'8. Right. They were just built to win it. And we actually walked them down. So there's, we got that DNA, too, where we got that confidence. So I don't think our confidence wa wavered. We just, you know, Cleveland came through with a buzzsaw situation happened with Draymond. Our top if Draymond our top plays game five, y'all win. The series is over. Probably. Because we have, don't forget, Bogues went down game, Bogues went down game five, I believe. Mm -hmm. He done for the year. Right. So, you know, and we still had an opportunity in, in, in game seven. Right. We, we were one sub away. I talked to Steve after the game. I will never say it, but we were one sub away from winning the championship. Right. So I, we had that confidence, but yeah, to have KD, I'm taking KD. All day, every day. You, you, uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I've had a lot of success playing with Kevin Durant. Right. 2010 World Championship was his coming out party, and then two NBA championships coming out of that. Yeah, it's, it's, and then I played with him in the Olympics 2012. Right. I'm pretty much undefeated with KD. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you, but you, you believe Steph is open to a reunion with Kevin Durant? I, I haven't had that conversation with Steph. Um, quite honestly, you know, I, I think he's in a different place now. We've been, we just been enjoying winning the league. I, I call this money heist that, that show on uh, Netflix. Yeah, where they, everybody know, <laughs> everybody in the world know, man. It's just, it's just eight people that just keep robbing us of everything. <laughs> we see them coming. We know they about to come here and get it, and we can't stop. Right. That's how I summed up this year. We start off eighteen and one, so y'all know we here. Y'all know this ain't no fluke. Right. And then we had a little slippage with some injuries. Then the playoffs start, and I'm like, and we looking like, oh, this sweet. We lock in. We gonna, we gonna, we gonna come get another right. one. Don't let us come get this one, right? Because y'all know what's gonna happen if we come. Draymond gonna be Draymond. We come and get this one. Y'all don't like hearing Draymond. Yeah, yeah. Draymond say y'all better let. But Steph, but when you guys got when when Steph and them got knocked out of the playoff at the play in Memphis, mm -hmm. he said we had some injuries. Mm -hmm. He say, but y'all better get us now because y'all don't want to see us next year. Mm -hmm. He foretold. Of what was to come. Yes. And I think my first, it's funny because my first, uh, when I signed with the Warriors 2013, and uh, you do the press conference, you say what you're supposed to say, PC, I'm coming here to try to win a championship. Right. Nobody take you serious. Right. But I, I'm saying to myself, I think I've, I've met the, the closest thing to Jesus Christ. Not to put that on him. Right. But I've never seen an individual, like, he, he, he doesn't stray away from who he is in terms of who he is as a person. So you know what you're getting night in, night out. And I can see it. And so I'm thinking I'm about to go try to win a championship. And 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 then we win a couple, and then he comes out and he says, y'all better get us now because we're coming back. I think y'all need to start taking Steph more serious when right. he's talking because y'all just so used to him being the baby face killer, this nice kid. Right. You know, uh, his, right. his faith is very strong. Uh-huh, uh-huh. His faith is strong. That means he got, that faith is real. Yeah. So what, what he's saying, he really believe in. And... Thus far, it's all come true. Before you play with him, did you realize how good Steph was? I mean, to to watch it from a distance, mm -hmm. you're like, damn, man, dude, making all these shots. And then you get up close to him and you watch him in practice and you see the things that he does before he even stepped foot on the court. Mm -hmm. Did you realize Steph was this good? Like generational, like transcendent good? Yeah, so when I saw him when he was younger, I saw his deficiency. So I'm the type of basketball mind where I'm just looking for your flaws. Right. All right, what doesn't he do? And... And can he get better at what he doesn't do well? Like, can he can he get rid of those deficiencies? So early in Steph's career, he, Steph was thin. Right. And he would get beat up. And his Achilles heel was European guards, like the Rubios, yeah. uh, 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 Navarro from Spain, mm -hmm. who we played in the World Championships, uh, Drogic scoring Drogic. So, and they were, like, crafty and thin, and they a little chippy. So, they you know, they hit you below the belt a few times here and there, and they might throw you off. And his handle wasn't always this tight. Right. Steph's handle wasn't always tight. He'd get loose with the ball. He'd always been loose with the ball with his turnovers. Right. And 
if you just watch Steph's progression, he's continued to get better. And that's the part people don't see. You know, they don't see us in the you know, 5 a.m. working out, all the weights we pushing. You know, what's my man Harrison from the Steelers? Yeah. We seen him, but he had been doing that. <laughs> you know, he didn't just get strong. Yeah, he, right. He been, Steph was the same way. He just, he didn't just get, like, he had been working and building up. Right. And he's been progressing year in, year out. Like, this year, Loon and I will be on the bench saying, all right, it's a tight game late in the fourth. We need Steph to be like MJ. We need them to start picking the game apart. You know, we don't need Steph to shoot a half court three or just pull up from three. We need to get to a midi. We need to need a bucket. And he started getting to it. Right. He started getting the paint up and under. You saw him flipping the ball. Like he was getting like. And that was the thing. Because early on is that let's run him off the three. Right. And but he wanted to settle. Now Steph going off. Steph got a got a layup package. He got a float game. Mm -hmm. He's not afraid to, to go in there and mix it up with the big. So now with the three, the three ball dropping mm -hmm. and with his float game, he's almost he's unguardable. Exactly. And they all, and you've never seen a 6'2 guy, 6'3 guy, a guy under 6'5 dominate the game the way he has. Nah. We've nah, never seen nah. that. Nah. I mean, do, I mean, small guy, guards. I mean, I was talking about guards. I mean, Magic was different. Magic, Magic 6'9. Was different, Magic, right. Magic was in, in the 50s and 60s, even early 70s, Magic would have been a, 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 a five, four or five, right. let alone a point guard. But you have to go back to AI to look at a guy undersized dominate the game. And Steph, he just took it. Just took it to it. I mean, but it's long because you see yeah. young. You see Isaiah Stockton had a long run. He just yeah. couldn't get but, over. But the his, hump. Stockton couldn't dominate the game offense. Stockton yeah, was couldn't. mainly passing. I'm just talking about guys who did it for this long. Like yeah. AI had his run, but AI only really played 12 years in the league, 11 mm -hmm. years in the league. And his last few years, you know, he was bouncing around right. a little bit. Isaiah had Achilles tear. His career really didn't last that long. Right. So you don't. You rarely see guys at that size really do it right. for this long. And I'm, they on a seven, eight year run. Him, Draymond, Clay. They really ran through the league. They disrupted a lot of a lot right. of things for a lot of guys. I think what happened, what helped him is that early on he had the injuries. He probably got that bug out of there, and so now mm -hmm. he's on a he's on a stretch now where he's about to be healthy for for a, a few more years. Let me get to you. You have an older brother, correct? Mm -hmm. How did he push you to become a better version of you? My uh, my older brother. He hates when I say this, but he was just he was just terrible. <laughs> I mean, he would just punish me. So he was always bigger and stronger than me. How just, much older is he than you? He's only a year and nine months. Okay. But he was just that big brother that was just, he was like a bully. Right. But as I got older, I, he started seeing how good I was. And he started feeding me that confidence. I never told him this. He was feeding me confidence. I didn't know it. Right. So once I got to like my freshman, sophomore year of high school, he he would let me hang out with him. He, he was like, I'm about to go party. He was like, but you, you're going to do good in life. You get good grades and you can hoop. Stay in your room. Right. We be going to the same place. Hey, big bro, I'm going to roll with you. No, you ain't. Stay in the house. I'm like, why, why you rock with me? <laughs> I'm not getting it. Right. But then as I'm getting older, I'm like, oh, he really said that. You know, he was kind of right. feeding me that confidence. And Believing you know, in you before yeah, you believed in yourself. Correct, because I didn't know. But when you get that confidence, like, that's what really is taking you over the top. Right. You ran You ran track. Mm -hmm. what, were you, what, what were your event? I was a, a high jumper and triple jumper. I was actually supposed to go to college for high jump. Okay. The basketball, I didn't play AAU but one year. Right. So I, basketball wasn't a guarantee until after my junior year I played AAU and had a good summer. But right. I think I was like top five in the country high jump my sophomore year. Right. So I was looking at that route too. Triple jump, that was my event. How far you triple jump? Triple jump, I was like 47. I would have got to 50. I didn't do it my senior year. I would have got to 50 feet, but right. I was like 47, 48 feet. Okay. My uh, my junior year. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that, that's pretty good. Yeah. Small Springfield, Illinois. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What's Springfield like? <laughs> Springfield Springfield gets mad at me. Isn't that in that a uh, uh, Lincoln's home? Yeah, Lincoln, Lincoln from there. <laughs> it's funny. I was just watching Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and uh, Uncle Uncle uh, what's it, Uncle Jeffrey? Yeah. Uh, Uncle, the Butler Jeffrey? No, Butler Jeffrey. It's Uncle Uncle Phil. Oh, Phil. Uncle Phil. Yeah. So I'm watching. Uh, I'm watching. Um, Fresh Prince last week. I'm starting from the beginning with my wife and uh, Uncle Phil. Parents come into town mm -hmm. and uh, he's talking about how he, he he marched with the Panthers. You know, he listened to Martin Luther King. I have mm -hmm. a dream speech. Like he's been around the way. He from, he from uh, I think he said he's from Baltimore, D.C. But come to find out, Will finds out he's from this little small town, North Carolina, Humbucking or something mm -hmm. like that. But he never wanted to identify that he was from there because right. it was a small town. No one really made it out. Everyone got stuck there and his parents were a little upset with him. And, you know, I have an interesting relationship with Springfield where, you know, uh, I did read that majority of NBA players come from a town like Springfield, 100, 150,000 people, a small community, you know, um, 
you get a basketball community and like high school was big. High school basketball was huge. So right. I had idols there. But coming from Springfield, uh, most people get stuck, especially the African Americans. You know, we got a lot of great talent, but guys don't get the grades. And right. you see a lot of good athletes. Uh, well, they they get to college for a semester. They end up right back home at the first semester because they couldn't cut it academically. And uh, I went to Arizona because I told myself, I got to get as far away from home as possible yeah. because I can't come back. Because right. once you get back, you, you get stuck. Again. You're yeah. not leaving again. So it's just that type of relationship. But, you know, uh, I always go back and, uh, you know, take care of the youth in terms of, you know, whether it be, uh, you know, jerseys and athletic apparel, uh, iPads. Um, you know, my mom does some great things with the YMCA. Uh, there's a ton of talent there. Right. You know, it's just getting them their mindset that there are other things outside of Springfield. If I were, all you guys went to the University of Arizona, Steve Kerr, Gilbert Arenas, Richard Jefferson, Mike Bibby, Jason Terry, Aaron Gordon, yourself, Channing Fry, Luke Walton. If all you guys play on the same team at the same time, how far are you going in March Madness? First of all, uh, first of all, Gilbert Arenas is the best player to come out of Arizona. Is he? Clear cut, not even close. What? I'm, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm big on Gilbert. Gilbert had everything. How about you? Hibachi put 60 on the Lakers <laughs> and a pair of Dolce and Cabanas. <laughs> Y'all remember that one? I do. I do. Of, he, we went to Dolce and Cabana and said, give me some shoes that is a high top. And he strapped them on. And that's never been. They made him take them off. He was scuffing up the court. <laughs> like, people, don't, people don't know how good Gilbert Arenas was because, you know, you get all the other stuff. Like, oh, so, I, yeah. I have my statement on, you know, Rashid and, yeah. and Giannis. But yeah. I'm saying, like, we're talking about straight game and what I've seen these guys do. And, you know, he, his career wasn't as, as long as it should have been. The injury. But Gilbert was the best player to come out of Arizona. So with that, saying all that, we got a chance to get, we got a chance to get far, like Final Four, Championship far. We got a chance. You're in the 2004 NBA draft. If they were to do an NBA, you were selected ninth overall by the Sixers. If they were to do that draft over again, mm -hmm. where is Iggy getting drafted? Dwight, that was Dwight Howard. Dwight uh, would have been one for one. sure. Yeah. Um, Okafor was two, Ben Gordon was three, Sean Livingston was four, Devin Harris was five, Childress, the Atlanta was six, Luol Deng Dang, seven, yeah. Raphael Rafael Rujo. Yeah. Um, Where did you go? You went ninth. I probably would have went like third if you picking off second or third because people forget how good Al Jefferson was. Yeah. Al Jefferson went on a run where he, went to Utah. He, yeah, uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Minnesota, where he. He was he was 25 and 10 on an, every single night. Right, you could just pencil it in, and so you can see Charlotte. Mike Him and Millsap were pretty good out there in Utah too. It's true, now. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he had one hand. He only went one way, but yeah. they couldn't stop it. Right, so I, I might would have might have went two, and then I probably would have went three. Delonte West was also in your draft, mm -hmm. and he's kind of falling on hard times. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out to him? Have you talked to Delonte? Have you seen him mm -hmm. in in a, in a period of time? I haven't I haven't seen Delonte. You know. Um, but Delonte and I had some really good interactions in the uh, rookie transition program. We were actually in the same group, so I was I was able to see the brilliance in him. Mm -hmm. You know, like he he's actually a brilliant individual, and yeah, it's just tough to see. You know, um, it's really tough to see. It's really tough to speak about because you know it's just two sides. Like we can help him a little bit more, right. but at the same time, he got to help himself. He got to help himself. So you know, I know Mark Cuban did a beautiful gesture, yeah. to try to help him out a little mm -hmm. bit, and you know he's going to keep guys trying to help him, but. You know, we, we got we to gotta meet in the middle, right. and, and hopefully we can. AI, what was it like playing with Allen Iverson? Because you were supposed to be, the, you were supposed to be AI 2.0, mm -hmm. because they had an AI, original AI, mm -hmm. and then you come in. What was playing, what was playing with AI like? Uh, he, he was like my big brother on the confidence thing. You know, I, I never forget, I'll be in the games, and I'm a rookie, and I wasn't expecting to start out the gate. Right. I wasn't expecting to play that much out the gate. You know, I earned my minutes and I'm playing a lot, but now I'm playing against the guys I looked up to. Right. You know, I think your high school years, you're looking at a lot of college players and those guys end up being in the league. Rip Hamilton was one of my favorite players. You right. Know, Rasheed Wallace was one of my favorite players. You know, a lot of the Carolina guys. Vince Carter right. was one of my favorite players. You know, uh, Antoine Jameson. So I would see these guys and uh, I remember my Rip Hamilton experience. I was just looking at Rip Hamilton. And I'm like, man, he good. Like, like he's an all-star. Right. And he hadn't been an all-star yet. And, and AI was just, he looked at me and he kind of punched me in the chest and said, you better than him. What's, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and, and that's, that's when it clicked, right? <laughs> all right, I got you. Right. I got you. And 
he slowly but surely just kind of start helping me with the smaller things, how to deal with the media, you know, not, you know, enjoy, enjoy life because they're going to turn on you at some point, which right. eventually it happened. Right. But he was just preparing me for all those things that I couldn't see coming. So right. when it happened, I can reflect and say, all right, he did his job in, in, in terms of, you know, helping me grow with the game and, and things that I would have to deal with that most people don't really want to talk about or, or bring up. Besides practice, is there any similarities between AI and Steph? <laughs> Um, or lack of practice with one and practice with the other. I think they're really true to who they are. Like that's the big sim- that's a big similarity between them two. They like opposite ends of the spectrum, right? But they're very comfortable with, with who they are, are. and they don't want it. And they say, "I'm not changing for any anybody." Steph would say, "I'm not I'm not changing to be more famous. I'm not changing to you know sell myself out or i'm not changing my faith to you know endorse this or that like he stays true to who he is ai was the same exact way you know i'm from where i'm from these are the boys that grew up with me and they got through the mud with me these are my guys they coming with me right you know why leave them behind in the mud i'm bringing them with me they gonna see the final things in life i'm not right. changing who i am or where i came from just because i say so so I, I would say that's that's the similarities of the two if steph ruined the game because everybody shooting threes not Higgins. everybody can't shoot like steph and they turn it, oh, it's a three-point game. The analytics says if you make this many threes, it's the equivalent of that many twos. But you got guys that shouldn't be shooting threes, shooting threes, Iggy. I don't think it's guys. I think all of them shouldn't be shooting threes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but did he ruin the game? I saw a little kid, uh, he made a shot, and he, he, he went, went to sleep on the down. He went to sleep on the court. It ain't, I mean, I, I see WNBA. Look, I, I see Skylar Diggins did it in WNBA. Congrats to her. Skylar having a great week. Yeah. She killed but, but the kids, the kids going to sleep on the court. Yeah, now, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking my belt off. I'm whooping. <laughs> line, man. I, I couldn't believe I. Now, now, that, that's I think our coaching has changed a right. lot in every sport. Right. Over the last 15 years. Yes. Because the money's gotten so large. Right. Now we're trying to build professional athletes. Right. And we're not coaching them the right, right. way. We're not holding them accountable. We're not being. We're not disciplining them the right way. In I terms understood of- what Mark Jackson was saying when he ruined the game. Steph didn't ruin the game is that coaches believe everybody can shoot the ball like Steph. This guy has a God-given ability, yes. and he's worked on the craft. Yeah, he worked on just it. don't think you can just go in the gym and start launching threes like, oh, yeah, but Steph do it. His, his father was one of the best three-point shooters yes. of all time. So he's been working on being a great three-point shooter yes. since he came out the womb. Correct. People not thinking about that. Hey, just go out there and shoot a whole bunch of threes, and, and we go into the league. How was Mark Jackson the foundation of what the Warriors later became, even though he didn't see them to the promised land? It was almost like... And, you know, not to sound, you know, sacrilegious or anything, when Dr. King says, I have a dream, and he didn't get to see a lot of the fruit right. getting buried of what we have today, mm-hmm. is that Mark Jackson, you, you know, yourself, uh, Clay, Steph, right. Draymond, you guys were the foundation piece. Mm-hmm. But what were some of the things that, that, that he developed in you guys that later helped you guys become the four-time champions that you are? I think it's a, it's a common theme. It's called confidence. And, you know, we talk about, in every sport, everybody that's a professional, it ain't but that much mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, the top talent versus the bottom. Right. Now, I do think our bottom is getting a little lower. We got to fix the bottom right. in all our sports. We got to raise the bottom. Right. You raise the bottom, you got a great product. Right. And now, you know, we just get that guys creeping in the league that shouldn't be here. But that confidence thing that Mark put in them is, is something different. Because I know some coaches who, you know, you take a guy like Johnny Flynn, who had injuries and, and he was he was drafted before Steph. Right. And he, he you know, had he been in a different situation, hey, he might still be here. Right. So I think, you know, Steph would have was gonna be who he was, but I think he got there um with the help of Mark in terms of just feeding him that that confidence every single day. And yeah, I mean, when I you say I got the best story. I got the best shooting backcourt in the history of the game. <sighs> and, and 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 you and they killed him. Yeah, say, they beat him up. You they say beat so, up you say something crazy right now. Like I said, Giannis. Um, I said Rasheed Wallace would be like Giannis. Today. Yeah, yeah. I think you were crazy and, too. I think you've been in that bottle right there. Did you see she? She had no flaws. That's all I'm saying. All right, and I'm gonna leave it like that. Except except up here. Like she she he was he was his modern days Kyrie where they was upset with him because he wouldn't upset he wouldn't accept you know, the way that the league and society says, this is how you got to move as an NBA player. He's like, right. no, I'm going to do me. So he kind of fought the system and they kind of hurt his game. Right. But we go to Mark Jackson and I get his one story. We in, fr- in front of the whole team. And this was, this was a, probably the most powerful moment that I've ever seen. And he told Steph, Steph, you are a guy. You are all-star. You are our best player. You're taking the last shot. We got to make sure your, num- your numbers come first. You're going to get your numbers every night. 
Now, if another point guard come in here and is trying to outplay you or making it a match about you and him and he's trying to outdo you, I'll take a loss. I'll take a loss. You're going to win that matchup. Wow. And when Mark said that, in front of the whole team. So ain't no, can't nobody hate. Can't nobody be mad. The, right. the head coach just told y'all who the man is, right? Right. Move out the way. And he's going to make sure the man, that he's always going to be the man because he ain't going to let nobody come in there and show him up. And I just made the Olympic team, so I'm still me. Right. I had no problems with that. I said, that's the type of coach I want to play for. Wow. When you get there, Steve Kerr asked you to come off the bench. Mm-hmm. You've been a starter your whole career. Right. What did that do to your ego? The ego, it didn't really bother me, the ego. It bothered me that I was playing well. And that's you come up. I was playing well. Like, right. I was playing well. You know, when I, the way I played in the finals, that's how I started off training camp. Right. Where I'm, I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a big year. We're going to make a run. Like, I, I had some work done on my body in the offseason. Right. I got it right. Right. I was feeling great. And so when he said come off the bench, I knew I would have to sacrifice my game. Right. What I just showed through three weeks, I was playing well, playing at a high level. I ain't missed in a while. I'm feeling myself. I'm thinking about making an all-star run. Right. And when you say come off the bench, you killed all my personal hey, goals. Yeah, ain't no, ain't no all-star run. Ain't no personal goals. Ain't no all-NBA. Ain't none of that. <laughs> ain't no all-defense. Right. Ain't no none of that. Right. And I think that is, that was the hardest part. But Steve went to Arizona, was coached by Coach O. I went to Arizona, was coached by Coach O. It was hard for me to be mad at him because we see basketball the same exact way. Right. So when he's explaining it, we're a better team with you coming off the bench. Our our, our bench is more dynamic. Right. You know, um, you know, I I can bring out Steph. I'm gonna leave in Clay. He can get his stuff off. You know, you and Sean can do y'all thing. We got some explosive scores where both are coming off the bench. You know, confessors could catch lives. So we're very dynamic. So I just need you to be a Swiss Army knife. And so he was 100 percent right. So it was hard for me to fight it. Um, the hardest part was I knew I wasn't going to have any numbers. I knew when I looked at the stat sheet, it would look like I didn't play good. Right. And every game he would say, you play great tonight. I'm like, Coach, man, I have four points, three rebounds, five assists, three steals, man. This is this, – I'm trash. <laughs> but I, I I understood what he was saying. Right. You know, I was a big part of why we won the game, but no one would know. Right. And I just couldn't be mad at it. But it, it all came to fruition once it, once it really mattered, which was in the finals and – you know, the rest is history. How did your life change? You became the first player to win the award without starting a senior regular season game. The first MVP to not have started every game in the finals. You averaged 16 points, four assists, about six rebounds. You uh, held LeBron to 38% shooting uh, compared to 44% without. How did winning the finals MVP change your life? It didn't really change my life because I move how I move. Like, I'm not going to. Now, people look at you different. Finals MVP, ain't, there ain't a whole lot of them. It's true. Now, that's one, that's one thing I got to work on with myself. Because I'll walk around and say, all right, I, 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 I want to I MVP, whatever. Like, I don't even know where the trophy's at. Right. You know, I, I just found my rings the other day. They was underneath the shelf. But I was like, oh, let me put these on the shelf. Like, right. why well, stop hiding? Yeah. So it took me, because I'm still playing. I'm still trying to keep that motivation. Like, you know, keep, keep level-headed. But sometimes I got to remind myself of who I am. But I think more than anything, on the business side, you know, I did my first tech deal right after... And it's a deal I was trying to get into. It got rejected. As soon as I went finals MVP, three days later, I get an email. I got some room for you in this deal. Wow. <laughs> that, that was my favorite part of winning finals MVP. <laughs> and then from there, now, now I'm rolling. LeBron. LeBron has probably got, you probably be 6-0. and You'd probably be 6-1 and in the finals if it wasn't for LeBron. Got you in 2016, Miami. Got me in Miami, yeah, yeah, yeah. The block. Tell me what's going through your mind, because you got a layup. Mm-hmm. I mean, step, hey, step, bounce, pass it mm-hmm. to you. You got a layup. You know y'all about to go up two points. Right. And at that point in time, because points had become so hard to come by, yeah. that might have been that might have been the, the final, the deficit, the final score of the game might have been you guys win by two. For sure. And you go up, you lay the ball up. You just, oh yeah, okay. Jr. makes you clutch. You bring it back up, and you, hey, I'm right there. I'm, I'm free and clear. Mm-hmm. So at, when when Steph, I threw, the, I got the rebound, pushed it. I probably should have kept going, but I hit Steph to do two on one. Right. Like we do practice drills every day, and then he bounces it back. I'm like dunk on his head. When I go up, he he do my strip to where he would have stripped it if I would have dunked it. Right. So I had to move it. Right. And now I'm like, man, what you just say, man? He's, and we ain't ain't nobody scoring. Right. Man, just put the ball, just lay it right there, and don't try to do nothing stupid. Right. Just lay it in. And I, it was one of the loudest 
the loudest sounds I ever heard. Boom! <laughs> and when it happened, I kind of, I was like, damn! <laughs> I was like, yo, that was the loudest. I'm like, what just happened? I, I, I didn't even know he blocked it, but I heard boom, and I was like, man, that was cold. Like, Did- I, I, I was really, it was like a fan moment. I was right. like, man, that was beautiful. Yeah, I was just talking about George in terms of, you know, your, 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 your opponent get the right. best of you. When he blocked the shot, I'm like, God dang, that was amazing. Like, I had that energy. Right. You know, and then for, for everything that come out of it, you always got to hear about it. Right. Whenever, whenever you have success, somebody going to remind you of it. Did you know he was that close? I wasn't surprised because if, if y'all notice, LeBron's always been chased down block. Yeah. And I think somewhere they had a code name for it where all, all LeBron wanted you to do as his teammate was just run in front of the ball and just run through the uh, offensive player. Right. Just run through him and make him make him do something. Just right. make him give me a split second and I'm right. coming to clean it up. Right. Like, that's been their thing. So... JR did what exactly it was like a right. setup. It's like throwing an alley oop. Right. I'm gonna set him up and blind coming. And 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 like I said, I could have tried to dunk it, but I'm like, I was too far, man. Just right. put the ball in the hole. And, right. and he came out of nowhere and just made it a credible play. And then I'm thinking, like, maybe I should have went to the other side. He had the but, other but, side yeah, exactly. cover too. <laughs> it was just an amazing play. And you know, uh, I've done many articles about it, and people expect me to have some type of, you know, ill feelings. I'm like, man, that's one of the best things I ever heard. But right. I heard it. I ain't see it, I heard it. Coach K compared you to Scottie Pippen. Do you like that comparison? Well, I'm from Illinois, so I you grew up watching Scotty. Scotty was my guy. Scotty's still my guy to this day. I played golf with Scotty uh, right before the pandemic. Like Scotty's my guy, so you know um, I played point guard growing up, and they call me Little Penny and they call me Little Scotty. So right. I was just used to that, hearing that my whole right. basketball career. I'm trying to figure out who's going to retire first. UD Udonis, you played with UD. He's 42. Iggy, 18 years, 38. Melo, 38. Mello. Ron, 37. Mm-hmm. PJ Tucker, 37. Chris Paul. Who's going to retire first? Oh, man. If I had to bet on it, probably me. Because, <laughs> like I said, like I got some things going on, and the basketball starting to, if, if the Interfere. basketball feel like it's in the interfering, I got to, you know, because go. I got some real goals, and, you know, like we talk about overall life goals, right. and, and you never know. You never know where life takes you and you get opportunities to do certain things you got to take. You try to be Mark Zuckerberg or, or Elon Musk, somebody, huh? Yeah, I'm trying to do some <laughs> things, man. Because nobody like us has ever done it. Right. You know what right. I mean? You got you got Robert Smith out there. Yes. Uh, who I'm a huge fan of. You know, uh, I think MJ did it the right way. Magic did it the right way. LeBron's yeah. doing it the right way. Yes. You know, and, and but they're they're figures who have, you know, they're the top at what they do of all time. So for me, I feel like I got to, you know, I got to really be businessman to have success in that space. So right. I, I can't, I can't go into a room and I'm Andre Iguodala. Like I can't go and say I'm Andre Iguodala. Let me in. No, I'm you got to bring LeBron. something more than that. I'm not Michael Jordan. I right. can't do that. So for me, is I'm really, I'm really tied in. I'm, I'm, you know, I do my studying on my own. I'm, I'm going through my own school right. in terms of, you know, making sure I'm reading the right things. I got to be up to date. I got to right. know what's going on with the markets. I got to know what's going on in the private sector and all those things. So that's where my mind's been taking me. So is that what you do? Like when you go, like, okay, I'm thinking about maybe investing in this com- company. You read as much material information as you possibly can because that's your money, right? That, right. I mean, that, that that that's my bread, mm-hmm. so, and you know, I ain't really trying to lose it. So I'm gonna make sure I know everything there is to know about this company before I put my hard-earned money into it. And I think you're building a track record too. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, data is all about your history. You know, right. What can you learn from 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 historical events that prepare you for the future, and then how can you better bet on the future right. and you see things before other people see it and now you you monetizing that. That's right. all capitalism is. It's just having information other people don't have before they have it. Right. And I think when you build that track record with your own money, now you could become a bank. You know, now you can become a private equity group. It's like, I, here's my track record. I've invested in 80 companies. Here's my ARR, my, my annual retu- rate of returns. Um, you know, here's, you know, how much money I made off that money. Um, and then these are the deals I've gotten into. And here's my expertise on board seats. And this is how I can help a company grow. And then these are the sectors I'm in. I'm in fintech, I'm in SaaS software, prop tech, health tech, and consumer marketplaces. So just giving people, like, I really have to prove to people that I know this space and I'm an actual businessman. So that's how you build a fund. And then obviously, you know, you got different funds with different, um, the way they charge fees, right. carries, you know, two and 20. And, you know, you're building billion dollar funds. That's what gener- generational wealth is, and right. that's how you're able to acquire a team. And then once you acquire a team, is you know, you know they're building arena cities now. Now you're building a city around your arena, so that's how you build generational. Is that what wealth. you are, is that is that what you're angling for? You want to own an NBA team? You want to be an ownership? Oh, 100%. And and I think 
you know, um, being around Pat Riley was big for me. And then being able to, I read his book, uh, Winter Within, and then I read uh, uh, Blood in the Garden, which was on the Knicks in the 90s. Beautiful book. And then it talks about how Pat got his ownership shares with the Miami Heat. Yeah. Going into that, sh going into that situation, coming from New York and how he leveraged right. the situations right. to get ownership and then how, this, how he set up. But, you know, Pat just didn't leverage it. He really produced in right. terms of what he did to the Heat. Like, he really built that franchise, and they're known as – they separated themselves from everyone else in the league in terms of how they build their culture, culture. and how they, they maximize their talent every single year. Like, if they got a bad group of guys in terms of talent, they still find a way to make it to the playoffs. Right. You know, they always overachieve. And being there, seeing how he works, and it's like, you know, you take the most out of every situation. I took that from that situation. Iggy. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Well, appreciate Best you. Best of luck. Yes, sir. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice. Got to roll the dice, that's why All my life, I've been grinding all my life yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life Sacrifice, hustle pay the price Want a slice, got to roll the dice, that's why All my life, I've been grinding all my life